Certainly a cover crop uh, works well if you have more than a two crop rotation. If you include wheat or some other spring crop in that rotation, you have an opportunity to plant cover crops and it. Cover crops also work best in an operation where you have livestock and can use that as an alternative livestock feed. Right now I'm also experimenting with some cover crops that include uh, brassica and crimson clovers and sun hemp and uh, sorghum sedan, that sort of thing. But cover crops also serve very well to bring up nutrients and replace nutrients for the subsequent crop. And so I have no problems using cover crops, even though I may not have livestock. I have been working with South Dakota State University on some cover crop projects. Uh, those cover crop projects have mostly involved the use of rye after corn harvest in the fall. And if we have a good fall and the rye emerges, that's fine. If not, it emerges in the spring. And if we have a warm spring, that rye will achieve a reasonable height uh, before termination prior to planting soybeans. Uh, my primary crops now are corn and soybeans. I have raised oats and wheat and other crops in the past, but the economics of things have kind of dictated more uh, the uh, cropping with corn and soybeans in a no-till operation. I have a relatively small acreage, uh, so we're limited in how many varieties we can plant, but I try to plant at least two and generally three varieties of both corn and soybeans. A typical corn variety or soybean variety may be only planted for about three years, and then new and better varieties come along, and so that keeps changing and I try to stay up to date. I'm a soybean seed grower, so I try to work with the most recent varieties, and I use uh, seed plots to determine which corn varieties and soybean varieties I might want to use on my farm. We try to select uh, varieties that uh, may be a little bit more cold tolerant when we plant them in the spring, but otherwise we use conventional varieties that are available through all the corn and soybean companies and uh, we try to manage the cool temperatures by cleaning the space on the row so that the sun will warm that area and hopefully result in good germination. I have tried in the past to select and use varieties that have some natural tolerance to drought. Uh, there are genetic alterations and genetic selections now for drought tolerance and I think we'll be looking more at those in the future. In the work that I've done so far, they have not yielded as well or any better than my conventional varieties. So I've been working pretty much with conventionally available varieties. I think in the future, we will need to look at drought tolerance because we almost always have periods during the year when there is some moisture stress. The weather data will show that we have a little bit longer growing season. That still creates some problems because we don't know exactly when it's going to start and when it's going to end. Our normal frost date may have moved from, let's say, the end of September to the 3rd or 4th or 5th of October in this area. It doesn't mean that we don't get a frost the 17th of September sometimes. And so we have to plan for that and we have to plan our varieties and our crops accordingly. My selection of crops has not changed because of a little bit longer growing season.